Now we've got time for uh, Jaco. Let's bring him into the conversation. The DX doctor himself. Hello, how are you? Hey, good, good, good. Excellent, excellent. So uh, you're here today to talk about the emerging data economy and has fueled with productized data and APIs, right? Um, yep. So if you want to go ahead and uh, share your slides there, uh, we'll, we'll let you kick off straight into that. Then we can have a, a chat at the end to see how that let goes. Probably that one. And yes, it's got a good look to it. And now we should be the full screen. Full screen. All right. So uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity to come here uh, in the API days again. I've been here previously speaking, and it's always a pleasure. This time, I took a little bit of different approach. It's not APIs only, even though I've been working with APIs for the past six years all the time. But uh, this time, I, I, I'm jumping into a little bit out of the scope and, uh, and combining the data products and uh, productized data to APIs and how those are actually required for the successful emerging of, of any kind of data economy, which is lurking now in the in behind the corner. Uh, before we go into any any deeper, uh, a few words about what, what, what I mean by data economy. Jaco, just one second. Could you go um, into the full screen with the presentation? It's currently a bit small on the screen. I'm, I'm, I'm putting, it's it's like well, huge in my end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's probably one of these things with, with monitors or something, I don't know. But uh, yeah, if you can if you can sort it else, don't worry. Uh, is there something I can actually do with it? Uh, uh, yeah, I think let me let you try. Let me try try again. Uh, I got the whole screen, and then I go to the presentation. And let's see what happens now. Yes, perfect. All Please. right. Thanks. So, uh, data economy briefly. Uh, global digital ecosystem. Uh, big surprise. Uh, data is in a, in a, in the in the centerpiece that's gathered, organized, blah blah blah, among the different uh, vendors and partners in in the network, and everyone wants to derive some kind of value out of it, and uh, uh, and eventually someone has to pay for it uh, to get the data. So that's one way to see what is a data economy, and that's how uh, how we see it, and how uh, how the presentation sees it. Now there are different approaches to data data economy, but this is focused on. Uh, seeing the data as products, uh, which you actually sell to someone. So uh, the data is not the problem. As we all know, we are drowning into the data, and the amount of data is growing all the time, uh, thanks to the 5G networks, thanks to the sensor networks, thanks to I IoT devices spread around the buildings and even in the trees and uh, swamps and uh, wherever. Basically, we are getting data more and more all the time, and we people also create data all the time. So that's not a problem for us. Data is there, and it's increasing. What is also not a problem uh, that we have uh, already now some uh, pretty pretty efficient ways to process and analyze data. Uh, uh, one one example is the big data analytics uh, and the related tools, and uh, that those actually are good enough to actually process the data, even huge amount of data. That's not a problem. You can always scale the solutions. But uh, okay, uh, it's worth to mention that Platform of Trust, which I present, is not a big data analytics service, even though the picture is from there. But don't don't mix those two, the two things. There. Those are separate things. But okay, we have the processing and analyzing and uh, capabilities, and we have the data. And we also have the APIs now. Uh, the, thanks to the emerging or, or already emerged API economy, which has been the biggest topic of the API days for years already, it's a concrete opportunity to go beyond the traditional vertical ICT solutions. So we have means to distribute the data as well, thanks to the APIs and thanks to the productized APIs, which is the which has been the, the big topic uh, of uh, recent years, because uh, seeing the APIs also as products, as we have been hearing all, uh, yesterday and even today. 
So data uh, processing capabilities, and we have the APIs to get to the data. So that's that we can sum that that's not the problem. The problem is that for the data economy to actually emerge is that uh, uh, the data has to be monetized and commercialized. And the problem is that we don't have data products, something easy to consume and easy to easy to find data products. So the access is product. The APIs are productized, but not the content. Not the, uh, not the, not the, um, how how does the Amancia Bose actually say it? It's a value proposition interface. So the value proposition is not productized. The access point is productized, and that is the problem now. now if we look into uh, a bit more detailed ways to the to the problem, I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, uh, but there's there's human related. A mindset related problems that uh, for some people data is just data it's nothing more it, it's bit, bits and bytes zeros and ones and that's it who sees any kind of products in that some people don't even understand it and they don't even uh, they don't need uh, they don't understand the need of productizement at all and it's hard to monetize any kind of data outside your own organization because it's hard to use hard to find uh, and, and, and so on and well, data is collected, but it's in data lakes or something like that. Hooray! So what? Uh, you need to get into it, and uh, it has to be easy to consume. Uh, and then, if the data is shared, it's it's like a snapshot. It's like data sets, and that's what well, that's how the open data started. And uh, it's not uh, it's not too often uh, offered uh, uh, via the APIs. It's more in the data sets way. But the consumers, the application builders, they actually want API access, and they more often want the streaming option. So they don't want to do the response, request response way of polling that they want. Uh, they want uh, uh, push kind of APIs as well. And uh, that's that's why I think that the consumers actually they don't want to buy the data itself, but they want to buy the access to it. So they are subscribing to the data stream. And that's kind of uh, that uh, reflects the business model that you need to take into account when you're building APIs or data products. <laughs> All right, so there's a lot of pro 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 problems, uh, and that these are the things that I have encountered in my work in the platform of trust. Uh, and uh, deriving from that, the solution, partial solution, is is uh, is in four parts. So that we need to have some kind of product uh, data product toolkit, which actually helps to uh, construct and design the data product, much like uh, any kind of business model canvases, for example. Then we need to have some kind of common data models or, and ontology, because without this, we don't have the interoperability and we don't have the standardizing factors. We don't, we can't make the data products easy to consume if they are if the data streams are completely different and they consist different kind of attributes and elements and so on. And we also need some kind of platform tools which help you enable you to actually create the data products as a self service so that it actually scales. And uh, obviously, the data products and the data stream uh, has to be provided via some kind of productized APIs. You need to have the product test access again. So these four elements is is how I see that the, at least we can get forward, and this is what we've been building so far. And we are not done. We haven't finalized every element of it, but we have got into 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 start. And I'm going to tell you what we have done so far. So if you look at the, the, the thing uh, a bit from different angles, so this is like a value chain. So in, in the bottom, you have low value and the high uh, up corner, you have the high value. So in the low, low value, you, you have just uh, zeros and uh, ones, uh, bits and bytes in some kind of devices, uh, in some uh, created data points created by some kind of uh, IoT devices, for example. And then you go up, 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 and you, create, you add value to the data itself. And as I mentioned, uh, one, one element is the common data models and ontology, which is uh, like harmonizing the data streams so that they always look the same from the consumer point of view. You, you don't need to adapt to dozen of, of uh, data models and the schemas, for example. And when you come to the next layer, which is the data product layer, you actually add the uh, um, elements and attributes of products. So for example, versioning, 
proper description, uh, pricing models, and so on. And then you have the, the the top layer, which is normally the visible layer, more or less visible layer for the for the consumers, the productized access, scalable access via the APIs or code libraries, SDKs, or or any kind of widgets, depending of of case and depending of of your capabilities to create these these additional elements. And then this AD, uh, this productized AI data is used in automation AI analytics applications and so on. So, but again, this is uh, like a, you, you want to create more value from the same data and, and uh, this is one way to increase the amount of value in the data. So what is a data product? Uh, uh, and the big question in my mind and in our mind in the team was that, where's the open API spec for data products? We have the specification for APIs and it's a standard, it works well. People have uh, started to build a lot of tools around it and the CI CD processes are compatible with the open API spec. Everything works out of the box. So where is the data product spec? It wasn't found anywhere. And at least we didn't find anything. Well, of course there's, there's uh, people defining the data streams, but that's not the product itself. So we started to, to define a, a open API spec or, at, or in our case, it's a data product spec. So we want it to be a bit similar like an open API spec. It's a default, uh, de facto standard uh, for APIs. And uh, now we started to work that uh, one of the companies started uh, as a swagger. And now we are doing the same kind of thing for the data product. So defining the technical spec. And I'm not gonna go through it, but it's, it's like the data product spec is like the swagger of data products. You can laugh. You can make a joke out of it, uh, but let's see a couple of years forward and it's going to be in, in your desk as well. All right, this is the bold, bold uh, goal that we actually have. So it's a machine-readable standard specification for, for data product schema. So we are defining the structure of, of uh, data product, which contains also the pricing options and the data stream options and the data stream formats and uh, product information, versioning, lifecycle status, name, and description, and so on. And some of these elements are, are uh, mandatory. Some of them are not a bit like in, in, in Swagger or, or on, in open API spec. And it's now emerging in dataproduct.oftrust.net URL, but it's not fully there yet. Uh, we're still working on it. And uh, the reason we had to do it uh, was, uh, was internal reason also we had to have some kind of technical uh, shared understanding that what are we actually building? Because the data product is uh, in the centerpiece of our platform. Uh, and uh, we are actually uh, providing soon a marketplace where actually uh, the data owners can actually create data products uh, for others to consume and buy. So we need we had to have this kind of uh, technical description for ourselves, but then, hey, why not make it open and uh, let's take other people uh, into the development as well. So it's building there and it's giving us the ontology and schema for, for technical people to, to build on, on top of it and uh, make our APIs compatible with it. All right, so that's, that's the technical, technical spec. Okay, now we have the technical defined, we can technically define a data product, yeah, rock, uh, but how, what the hell? Why aren't the data owners creating any kind of data products? Well, answer is that uh, we, at that point, we didn't look far enough back in the process because customers didn't have any kind of tools to do the design of the data products. And big surprise, big surprise, it's, a, it's like a business model canvases uh, kind of a set uh, which, we, which we actually have now labeled as data product toolkit. It's a collection of, of canvases which actually helps the customers to design a data product while keeping the business objective in mind. So it's not a technical technical approach, but it's like a whole village approach, which actually contains the uh, business angle, marketing angle, and, and so on. So this should be rather uh, familiar with business people, this kind of thinking. And this is now work in progress also. And uh, now in beta testing uh, with the pharmaceutic, pharmaceutical industry and a couple of smart city development projects and we continued developing the, the tools, toolkit with them and uh, enhance the tool toolkit and, and as we go forward. If you want to join the beta for program, you can go to dataproductbusiness.com and uh, join there. 
So, all right, now now they have business people have some kind of tools to make a design out of what what is a data product and what what is the reason for it? Why are we even building this kind of thing? Yes, we can do technically define the data product and we can design uh, business driven data products. Good, but why aren't the consumers using the data products? Answer is that yes, okay, you need to have the modern access. So, okay, now we come to the topic of the conference APIs. Consumers want the APIs and more often they want the subscription mode and they want to, to see business models that they pay a monthly fee instead of paying for for some, some individual access uh, calls to any kind of APIs. That's not a big news, news for you, anyone. All right. And for that APIs, in, in our case, uh, just briefly, we have uh, entered the design-driven uh, API development and our platform contains multiple APIs. So it's a family of APIs that uh, all of the customers of the platform need to use in creation of the APIs and also in, in consuming the API, sorry, in consuming the data products. And uh, how to make them all consistent is that we have a platform design guide, which actually contains API design guide. So that's that's the Bible of, of design rules and uh, also uh, mandates uh, the implementation to some extent. And as, as I mentioned, we have gone to the design first principle now and uh, added the API management to the process, which actually provides the mocking capabilities and, and uh, which actually helps in validating what we are actually going to be building. And clear versioning, of course, that's, that's, that's a must have uh, in any of, uh, any of the APIs, when you, especially when you have multiple APIs. Even you're gonna go insane if you're not clear if you're not clear uh, with the versioning yourself, uh, and then your clients are gonna be bitching about it uh, in in a minute. And uh, we have put a lot of focus on developer guides, which actually tells the developers that uh, how you use these uh, multiple APIs to do some 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 uh, operations uh, with the data products and and so on. And we provide the API documentation with tested code examples. And as I said, we have API management for mocking and analysis of the API usage. And uh, we have also added each of the APIs to uptime tracking. So it's a third party tracking uh, where the developers can see how the, the, how the APIs have been behaving lately. And we also provide the, the client packages. Currently, uh, version one APIs. Uh, only have the insomnia packages, but in the version two APIs, which we started to build now, uh, we're gonna uh, go to the Postman collections. And if you want to read about this kind of uh, uh, process and uh, productizing your APIs, I really recommend uh, uh, Amancio Bosa's book, uh, API Product Management. And then if you know, want to know more about the API business itself, you read the API Economy 101. And if you know, want to know more about the process itself, this is, our process described here is a modification of API of cycles. So we have adjusted the model to, 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 to reflect the necessities and needs of our organization. But look at the API of cycles.com and see more about the design driven API development from there as well. So to look this a bit differently, uh, customers have some kind of uh, needs on, on the left side. They have probably some kind of data strategy goals and they have some data somewhere. Then they need to discover and define some kind of data product model. In, in this process, they actually use the data product toolkit. And uh, then they go forward and then they actually develop the, uh, uh, develop the data products. Uh, and then in, the, in that process, they actually use the shared ontology and schemas and also the data product toolkit to, to communicate all the plans and uh, nuances and everything else to the developers and so on. And then they actually need to deliver it. And, the, and in, in that, they actually need to productize the APIs. And the APIs must, must be working seamlessly together with the data products themselves. So that's also one reason to open the specification for everyone so that we can make sure that every, everything is in line and aligned and uh, then the data product actually evolves uh, to something, whatever it normally products uh, come to different versions and uh, change all the time. And it goes to the data, data product consumers 
Of course. But okay, you need to have uh, different kind of tools in different kind of phases. And uh, this is how we actually see that uh, we need to have both the product, the productized APIs and the productized data. And those need to work together. And then you need to have some kind of tooling, tooling to actually help the business people and technical people to work on, on, on towards the same goal. So data economy requires productized data streams and access and uh, the added value is in the data which is packaged into easy to understand, easy to buy and easy to consume data products. And APIs provide the modern access to discover, purchase and consume given data products. That's, that's, that's how we see that uh, we're going to change the world and uh, that's how our platform is different from other data, data ecosystem driven platforms. Thank you. All right, Yako, good presentation. Thanks a lot. It, I really got the feeling, you know, uh, looking for your presentation there, that, that you've got all this stuff, right? It, it's there and waiting for, for uh, people to come along and just start using it, you know? Uh, you've got the templates and everything. It's all set up and ready to go. Cool. And I also like the plug as well you gave for uh, to my ex-colleagues, uh, Amancio and Andrea. Um, those guys worked really hard on the, the API product management um, book. It's a pleasure to, to be a part of that uh, journey with them as well. Uh, and of course, the whole uh, popsicles, um, sorry, uh, API op cycles thing um, that, that uh, you guys have been working on as well. It was good. So. If I've understood correctly, you know, when we're talking about these um, data products that you mentioned earlier in your presentation, it, it, would it be like okay to say that that's like you know um, like a metadata presentation of what a product is? Well, uh, yeah, it, the, the, the most easiest easiest way to understand what is a data product is like uh, how you how you now purchase applications to your mobile phones. So you're going to an app store or something. So that's the kind of thinking we want to inject into product in the data okay. world as well. And that's where we got the idea that, hey, this is the easy way to consume uh, applications. What the hell? Why can't we do it with the data as well? And uh, at the same time, make, make it uh, commercialize the data as well. Package it clearly so that it's standardized format and, and uh, different organizations can follow the same same kind of pattern. And that's why we are sharing, sharing the design spec as well for the data product itself. So yes. Okay, so, so your ultimate, you said you, I think you're working on a, a marketplace in the background. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. tell us a little bit more about that? Well, it's, 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 in, it's in the table of our CEO, so I'm not uh, allowed to tell you much about it. So, but we're, we're now focusing on, on, uh, on, on, the, on the standardized data streams. So basically we are uh, building now the capabilities for all of these data product features. Uh, and some of them are already, already in place. And we have already the streaming data products uh, available technically. But then, then how to make them? How to make them to the surface is the marketplace where the consumers actually see them eventually, and that is now what we are building in this second half of this year, and it's going to be launched uh, at latest uh, beginning of next year. Okay, hey, very really looking forward to seeing that one. Um, thank you very much for your presentation, and uh, we shall see you a little while at uh, five fifteen in the uh, Q and A session. So. Yep. Hey. Again, to the stage, um, if you have any questions for that session, please feel free to, to go ahead and put them up now. The more challenging, the better, right, Diaco? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right, see you in a bit, bye-bye.